Hey, what up team? It's Joe Mill here back with Killer Miller Q. And today we're gonna put our pinkies up a little bit. We're gonna be messing with a little bit of this Chateau Brion. Or should I say this uh center cut of this beef tenderloin? I got the Lone Star grill fired up. You know it's gonna be good. Let's get right to it. First things first, it's the day before, and uh, we're going to make up a little bit of this Killer Miller style authentic Argentinian chimichurri sauce here. I got all the ingredients that we're going to be using, nothing too, too crazy, but uh, I'll go through it for you. We got us a full bunch of this uh, Italian parsley. That's that flat leaf parsley. You want to go with some of that. And uh, from there, we got some good old fashioned garlic cloves. I'm going to be using about six of those some two tablespoons of this dry oregano we got a tablespoon of some red pepper flakes about three-fourths a cup of some uh, good olive oil uh, about a fourth of a cup of some red wine vinegar we're gonna salt and pepper this thing to taste i always like using fresh uh, ground uh, black pepper and then to kind of finish it out we got a couple bay leaves oh where are they at there we go couple bay leaves that we're going to be throwing in this thing that we'll kind of break out and let it sit. Now, keep in mind, some people like this a little bit more on the fresh side. I would say at least let it get about a good four hours or so to marinate and kind of sit. I am going to kind of get this one going overnight so it can really, really come together. I think in the freshness, you kind of taste a lot more of the green and the garlic, but then when everything kind of gets to sit, it just marries together a little bit more beautiful. So, Let's get to the portion there. We put this thing together. Nothing too crazy. I zero in on that real quick just so you know and you got you a shot of what I'm going to use for this old recipe. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is we need to get rid of these stems. Basically, I want to get down to nothing but the leaves itself. Get rid of the majority of that stem. Right? Take it all the way up to there and up to there. And then once I get that all broken down and get those stems out of there, I'm going to start to chop that parsley up. The next thing after that, we're going to be working on some of this uh, garlic, and I'm actually going to bring out my hydroplane and grade that into there, and pretty much everything else is just going to be kind of a mix, throw it in, and then squish it all together. All right, let's get started. And this is what that looks like. Get out of there. Some people will save these uh, stalks and stems, turn around and use that later on when you're making broth. For me, I'm tossing it. That's what I want. Done but these pretty much leafies. Takes a little time, but nothing too crazy. It's not like it's rocket science. Nothing but the leaf. Try to get rid of as much stem as you want, or as you can. We're going to chop this up nice and fine, and then we're moving on. And there's a view of it all taken care of. Obviously, you can use a food processor for this if you want to, make life a little bit easier, but you can break this out with a good old-fashioned knife. Like I said, we're doing it authentic style for what it's worth, and I did not want to pull out that food processor and have to worry about cleaning it up. So we use a good old-fashioned kitchen knife and chopped it up. What I do is once I get down to that little bit, I start going one way, chop it over, turn the cutting board, go the opposite way, do that a few times, and then at the very end, I go through it sideways and then make sure I kind of move everything around. So that's basically the consistency I'm looking for right there i'm about to be throwing all of this right on over into my bowl and then we're going to move on and get to this garlic or i probably said hydroplane just a minute ago we're going to be using the microplane okay basically all i'm going to be doing is grating this uh garlic right over this uh microplane directly right into the bowl nothing too too crazy if you got a one of those garlic smushers that kind of squirts it out the back end that'll work right here too if you have neither chop this baby up nice and fine toss it in there it's gonna be just fine i'm gonna be using this old microplane this thing is kind of cool the way it mushes everything up and it'll kind of help it all come together a little bit easier and now to come out looking pretty much like that after we kind of ran it through that hydroplane so here's a little tip that i do you always end up with those little pieces if you ever use one of those, like I said, hydroplane again, a microplane. If you ever use one of the microplane, you end up with those little pieces that, uh, you know, unless you're about to grate your hand off, um, that's always still there. I'm not getting rid of those. I'm about to chop that up nice and fine. That's going in there too. And from there, we pretty much just going to be adding in the rest of the ingredients that we haven't put in yet. All right. So now we're going to just kind of put everything else together. First things first, and let's get wet, shall we? 
We're going to be adding in that olive oil. Obviously, it doesn't matter, man. We're just mixing all this stuff up so you can put in any way you like. The one thing I will say is I like to leave that salt and pepper to the end because that's to taste. Everything else, I'm going in all in. There's that oregano. A little bit of heat. Ah, you know what, too? There was an optional ingredient that I started to put in here that I didn't. I ended up deciding not to. My red wine vinegar, which was, I wanted to, I thought about adding some shallots. I ended up not going with it. At the end of the day, it's totally, uh, it wouldn't have been so much authentic, but hey, this is Killer Miller style, as you see from the title, right? So I was thinking about throwing some shallots in there, uh, shallots in there, which would have definitely gave me a nice little bit of flavor. I actually bought one, and then at the last second, I decided not to. The only thing we're going to do with these two bay leaves, and I'm going to need my two hands for these last couple things, I'm going to rip these two in half and drop them directly in there. They're just going to give in some uh, additional flavor as this kind of sits. And then um, I'll give it a couple pinches of salt, about mm, five to eight grains of uh, cracks of this uh, black pepper, and I'll give it a taste, and I'll show you, and we'll see what we got. All right, look, mama, no hands. Or should I say one hand now? Now we got that little bit of salt in there. I got me a little black pepper to start. Look at that beautifulness starting to come out. Let's see if I can get in there without too much shadow. Beautiful green. This should be a little gunky as it kind of sits. You will notice the consistency change up a little bit, but see how that is right there? Nice and thick. That's what I want. Be careful too. At the end of the day, I don't want too, too much salt in here. Just a little bit to kind of bring that flavor out. But this is more about herbs and all that good stuff coming together with a lot of that garlic. And a little bit of heat since I put those uh, red pepper flakes in there. I'm going to do a good job seasoning this steak. So I don't want to add too much salt onto the party. But man, if you could smell that. This is what we're looking for right there, baby. I'm about to go. All right, it is the day after. We getting into this work now, shall we? We are looking at a beautiful and expensive piece of meat, okay? We're looking at this beef tenderloin. This is not the whole beef tenderloin. This is basically the Chateau Brio or something very close to that. <laughs> basically, you got nothing but the center cut of the best part of it. If you got the whole thing, you're gonna have a whole lot more fat on the top. It's a bunch of globules. There's a whole nother muscle that you end up having to pull out. Um, this is the one that comes in the bag where they've already pretty much cleaned it up. You know if we're talking about a filet, you're going to end up with a real tender piece of meat. This is the best meat on the, as far as like the steak, as far as your tender and everything. This is it. Not a whole lot of marbling, not a whole lot of fat, so we will be delicate to this baby. But uh, this is what you're looking at. Normally you're going to have his head part down here. It's a little oddly shaped, a little extra piece of bigger flap uh, towards the bottom. And then you got this tail which lays all the way out, and I won't do it so it'll get all on my uh, towel, but it lays all the way out there. Now, normally what you can do is, like as you see, it's kind of already folded over. You want to try to keep everything more or less even when you're in there so you can get even cooking. Otherwise, if I laid this all the way out, this tip is going to get done a hell of a lot faster than what this in the middle and towards that thicker end is going to be. So, what we're going to do today, normally you can butcher twine this, kind of lay it together and layer it, and then from there, uh, it'll cook pretty evenly. Only thing I don't like about butcher twine is when I do take it off, I get all those lines all over my meat. means absolutely nothing. I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to be chopping this baby into big old fillets, so I probably end up cutting on those lines. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go ahead and cut that tail off. So I'll probably cut it just about right there. And um, I'll have me a nice, solid, pretty even piece of meat. I'm going to throw this one a little bit to the side. And then um, I'll have me another little fillet that I can make separately on its own. This right here was almost four pounds of uh, beef tenderloin. But like I said, nothing really to clean up on here. As I took it out the bag, patted it dry, there was a little bit of fat that I was able to either pull off or just trim off. But normally, like I said, there will be a ton of silver skin on here that you would want to get rid of and um, even some big globule fat that you want to do. But this is what you want to get down to as far as your end product. So I'm starting the easy way, shall we say. Let me clean off this tail, and then uh, we're going to get into these rubs. All right, tail is off. And this is pretty much what we're going to work with today. There is my little tail. 
I'm probably going to end up vacuum sealing that, but to be honest, that might not last that long. I might end up bringing out steak and eggs or something to kind of kick off the old football weekend. This is what we're going to do to get this thing kicked off today. I'm going to be using a little bit of a Worcestershire, Worcestershire, whatever you like to call it, a little W sauce, shall we say, um, to kind of be my slather and give it a little bit of the first layer of flavor. I'll get that all over it. The first thing I'm going to be doing is coming with me a nice uh, layer of that black pepper. If you've been following along, you know I like my black pepper. And and that's going to help us get us a nice crust. We're going to come right back over that with some of this kosher salt um, liberally all around it. And then I'm going to finish off with a special rub right here that I really like with Bearded Butchers. Uh, some more guys from Ohio. They got some excellent rubs. And I can't wait till I get a chance to actually visit there and check out some of that meat. But I'm um, going with this Bearded Butchers Black, which is kind of like a coffee rub. I like this rub on steak. I think it's going to come out great. We're going to try to put a little bit of respect while we got our pinky up over here with this old filet or this beef tenderloin, shall we say. Let me get this uh, slather on here, and then we'll start with that first layer of the black pepper. Okay, it is peppered up on all sides. And I think I've told you this before if you've been following along. I like going with the pepper first. This is the coarse black pepper, nice and big as far as the particle. That way I know for a fact I'm going to get a nice amount of that on. And then all this other stuff that's going to come on there is going to be more dusty, so it can find its way in there. I'm going to get my bark first. Now let's come with a little bit of that salt. All right, so we got the salt on. Don't go too, too crazy with this salt. I mean, I am going to be putting a little bit of salt. I mean, if you're using a secondary rub, if you're only doing salt and pepper, obviously you want to hit it up good. But uh, being that I'm about to add another rub that's got a little something in there, not super salty, but does got a little flavor, we don't got to kill it. Plus, you can always add a little bit of salt at the very end when you get your steak and you actually cut this baby open, which is normally what they're going to do at the restaurants, right? So pretty much now you got that on. I made sure I opened up these flaps a little bit so I can get a little bit of seasoning up in there as well. Now I'm about to come over with a nice healthy layer of that bearded butcher's black seasoning all over. Check that out one time. Get out of here, fly. We got this baby heavenly flavored as I like to say and heavily favored by the time I get done with this old smoking job everything is looking good already smelling good the last thing that I'm gonna do is get all this little bit of stuff up that's on my uh, cutting board here so I'm just gonna roll it back and forth a little bit like I said make sure you get in there get the insides make sure that you got this thing all the way around with your seasoning including the flat side i want to make sure i got a nice crust all over and you want to make sure you got a flavor we cooking this thing as a roast but this is steak so we're going to end up cutting this and basically all we're going to have is the flavor you got on the outside and whatever is able to penetrate through the middle so it won't be as much as you think obviously don't over salt it but i want to put a little something on it i'm gonna let this thing rub around get all the rest of this out and i'm about to put this in the fridge to hang out for a little bit and then we'll be getting this fire up the temp here just soon enough Hey team, I want to jump in here real quick and let you know I appreciate you for following along on today's cook. If you are new to the channel, go to that bottom right corner, make sure you subscribe, check out some of the other videos you might have already missed, and for everybody else, keep on following along, share it along with somebody else that you might know, and find me on IG and Facebook if you haven't already. Let's get back to this work. Alright, so this baby got a chance to hang out in my refrigerator for a few hours and uh, sit out now for about 20 minutes. And uh, we nearly up to temp. You know, we messing with the old Lone Star for the day. And I'm gonna be rolling with the uh, normal pecan uh, splits over there. I'm gonna try to keep this thing down pretty low and slow. We get this reverse sear in. And um, initially, maybe I'll keep it at about around 250. My grill's just about there. And then um, I'm gonna be rotating this baby hmm, pretty often to try to make sure that I can kind of get it nice and even all the way around. And there she is. Make sure you kind of form this thing up to make it a nice little log. Um, I'm going to kind of start this baby off just like that. couple probes in there, one towards the back of my thicker end, and then one more or less right there in the middle. Um, as you know, as most people will surely hate with this beautiful steak, I'm going to be cooking this up to about a medium well. So uh, we got a little bit. i bring you back along the way. No spritz necessary. All right, we back at you. We've been about 45 minutes in, tossing me a log in, letting this thing get nice and going. I just opened this baby up. Look how pretty she look. Look how pretty she look. So I'm letting, sitting at about 120-ish, actually towards my thick end, and this front is at 115. So for you people that like it more or less rare, that would almost be ready for them to take it on up out of here and sear it. 
for me, I'm gonna be going more to about 140. I'm gonna rotate this baby in a 180 and put this fat side up at the front and put that towards the back. I usually find the back side of this pit uh, usually cooks a little bit faster. And then um, I bring you back here probably in about another half hour or so. All right, I'm getting all the indications as you can see. Steady Freddy. Not a drip of nothing that you don't want to see coming out the top of that thing. I love this damn Lone Star. We sitting good. Uh, by all indications. Oh yeah, let's see this pretty color. All right, so this is what we gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and just check it with my Thermapen, but I'm basically about where I wanna be. Oh, this baby's so tender. Perfect, Joe. Good job, baby. I want to get this off here roughly about 145. I'll probably give me some carryover to close to 150. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pump a little bit more uh, wood in here and then we'll uh, get this baby ready to get seared off, even though my color is beautiful. Let me get this in the light a little bit so y'all can check this out. I'm gonna char him anyway, because we already said we was reverse searing. Come on out of there. But, uh, man, this baby looking like a steamboat. I can't wait to taste this right here. Man, look at this baby. Before I go ahead and uh, throw this in my microwave, I just threw me a nice big log in there. I'm about to throw a little bit of aluminum foil over it and lightly tint this and I'm gonna let this hang out. Basically, we're about to go ahead and get this flame kicked up. Get some heat in this baby, as you can see. Spray this rack and remove this flat cover. And then we're gonna get a quick little sear off. I tell you what, man, this color is already pretty. I could literally roll with it as is. We're gonna give it a little bit of a sear off and then we'll bring this baby in here and taste it. All right. It has been a little over five minutes. I want to let this hang out for a little bit and let that wood calm back down. Man, this baby looks so juicy. That's where that probe was at. You see that juice coming up out of there. Still got some reddish tint to it. So uh, I'm letting it know that it doesn't cook too, too far. We got some beautiful juice that came out this thing already as it's been resting. And man, let me tell you that, uh, Bearded Butcher's Black and my little you know flavor combo with that black pepper, man, we got a great looking color on here. We're gonna get a quick sear. My phone will get hot, so you won't catch a lot of this on tape. Uh, let's open this puppy up. I'm about to get this on, and uh, we're gonna go a minute on each side. You know how we do. All right, I checked after that first minute. I wanted a little bit more. We look pretty. Ah, uh, yeah, that's not too bad at all. Getting a little char. We'll bring it back. Another two, another minute or so. I checked the other side. All right, it has been about a minute, and let's check it out. Love it. You coming off. Focus in there one time. Let's check it out. Ooh -wee, nice pretty char. That's what you want. Check us out one time here, team. Come on now. Beautiful bark. When I tell you beautiful bark, I mean beautiful. Ho, 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 ho. That's right. This is going to be succulent. We also took the liberty while this is uh, chilling out. And while I was in the searing process, pulled this out the old refrigerator. You can tell this has gotten a little bit thicker. I'm gonna get me a little bit of this out. You know, I want it to be more room temp, throw a little bit in the dish. I'm gonna let this hang out for about mm, five minutes or so, longer. And we're gonna cut into this thing and see what we are talking about. All right, so I wanted to bring you in here close as we gonna get this juicy thing cut up. Uh, normally I probably would go from this thicker side, but I'm feeling this nice and pretty little edges over here. So, uh, this is where we're going to start. Now, you know, if you've been following along, this ain't the sharpest knife in the world. I'm holding out, man. Cut cold. Somebody going to come see me sooner or later. But, uh, <laughs> until then, it is what it is. I'm just going to chop me up some nice size little fillets. Keeping in mind, I got a lady that is not going to put down as much as me. As I get into these thick areas, I'm going to make me some nice purdy daddies. And this thing is juicy. And I can smell that smoke. That pecan smoke did wonders. Trying to be nice and gentle to not uh, disrupt this camera too, too much. Well, you know when you start getting down here into this fatter end, you're going to get some different sizes. And then I think i go one more about right there. I'm going to chop this baby all up. And I got steak all week long. We are nice and juicy. Let's go for the unveil. Oh my gosh. And that is a beautiful, 
medium to medium well, just like I like it. Plenty of juice still dripping out of there. For fun, I give it a baby squeeze, but we ain't gonna do too much on that. Oh man, that's beautiful. Get back in there and line. Okay, you know what's next. I'm gonna flip this thing around. I got to taste some of this. Let's see, is that thing focused in on there? Can we see? There we go. Let me tap that one time. Check out my bark, man. Let me pull this back up here just in case you got a bad view of what you were supposed to be seeing. Man, this thing is pretty. Get out of here. These flies smell it. I'm about to get this thing flipped around so they don't get it before I get it. All right, team, we got that thing done. Roughly about an hour and 45 minutes over there on the Long Star. We got the reverse Siri and pecan smoke. That baby looks good. You saw it with the cut. Super juicy. I literally had to change out my towel because I already got everything dirty, but I'm looking forward to getting the taste in. Before I do, big shouts out to my guys over there with Black Smoke Barbecue. Everybody doing big things, and I'm looking forward to doing some collabos so you can meet some of my other people that be looking out for me on the back end, as well as Lucy Lou and Mark over there with Cutting Edge Clothing for putting me together with this uh, nice custom Cowboys jersey. Long time to go as far as the rest of the season, but with that said, I'm happy to have something to represent in style. Come on in here and let's check this out. All right, I'm going to pull out this piece. This one had a chance to sit for a second. Boy, these flies is, is all over me. Let me go ahead and throw it that way. And then we'll go from there. We'll get me some beautiful cuts. Get out of there. It's so tender. So, so tender. Oh, man, that's wall to wall. That's exactly what I wanted. You can see where it didn't cook down a little bit while we had it resting. Make sure I hurry up before these flies get a hold of all of this goodness. This is that chimichurri that we made. You see it came together into a nice consistency. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit it a little bit of that over the top. Maybe a little more for good measure. All right. And I'm going right in with a classic big boy bite. Or actually, you know what? I'm going to be nice, man. Cut this thing in half. I'm going to be nice. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the best part. All right. Cheers. Mm. Spend the money and do it yourself. Let me tell you. Beautiful smoke. So juicy. So tender. So soft. Wow. You can really tell the difference with filet mignon. For a long time, I wouldn't even mess with it because I felt like it wasn't big enough. But obviously, when you make your own, you can make whatever size you want. But it's all product in there. Juicy, flavorful, love that bearded black, salt and pepper, and uh, that chimichurri. You can use that on beef, pork, chicken, whatever you want. Tacos, name it. We're going to try some more of that. I'm going to get into this, and I'm going to catch y'all next week. Peace. I had to hurry up and run up out of there because them flies was at my neck. But let me show you something. Juicy like Lucy. Lucy Lou, I'm not talking about you. But come on, y'all. Woo! And this chimichurri. Perfect. Peace.